Welcome to Get Rich Education with Keith Weinhold, giving you information and ideas on the investment that has turned more ordinary people into millionaires and billionaires than anything else, and can provide you with more wealth and happiness than you ever thought possible. Now, here's your host, investor, entrepreneur, business owner, and educator, Keith Weinhold. Welcome to the Get Rich Education Podcast, show number 11. I am your host, Keith Weinhold. With listeners in over 90 countries, it's the show where I've just been giving away all of my best investor information. Now, among real estate investments, I've been fortunate enough to be a successful investor ever since I bought my first fourplex building in 2002, and then I branched out nationally and internationally. My show gives you all my best investing ideas and insights, and some for starting your own business too. I even hook you up with my contacts for all this like I've already begun to by showing you how to invest in profitable real estate with little research through leveraging Terry Kerr's expertise in episode 9. Today I want to ask you, how can the net worth of everything that you own be worth more dollars today than it was a year ago? yet you still have less wealth than you did a year ago. Phrased another way, how can the value of your investment portfolio be worth more dollars than ever, yet your prosperity has gradually diminished? You want more dollars, right? I do too. Uh, Yep, I'm generally in favor of that. I agree. (laughs) But how do you adjust for when dollars, euros, or pesos are worth less today due to their diminished purchasing power because of inflation? All right. Spending money is more fun than saving money. Yes, spending is more fun than saving. You already knew that, right? I didn't need to tell you. But you don't expect to hear that on a wealth building show, do you? I mean, what kind of responsible financial advice is that anyway? Well, I spend more every year than I did the previous year, and I have an intent to do that indefinitely. At some point, maybe you should too. Inflation is part of that reason. At the same time, I'm not a saver. It doesn't pay to be a saver. No one saves their way to wealth. But I am a passionate investor. As long as your investments generate more income every year at a faster rate of increase than your expenses increase, then you have greater prosperity. You don't want to live below your means. You want to expand your means. Expanding just takes some investor knowledge. I am here to give you a financial plan so that you can live a better life yourself and provide a better life for others. If you don't have a financial plan, somebody else is going to sell you theirs. A lot of financial planners tell you to focus on living below your means so that you'll have more dollars to give them to manage for you and they can get a higher commission. They don't care that you're living worse. When you live below your means, you're living worse and you're giving more money and commissions to others so that they're the ones living better. It's a little bit like when people tell me that they're contributing to their 401k. All right, so now they're living worse because they're deferring their income until later. I wouldn't contribute to a 401k unless maybe it had a substantial match. Well, in real estate, the tax advantages are as good or better. Real estate returns are better too. And the big thing with a 401k that I ask people is this. Where's your income? Where's your income? Rental real estate and other investments provide you monthly or quarterly income the entire time that you hold on to them rather than only taking income away from you like a 401k does. Many people contribute to 401ks because it's easy, it's done for you, it's even deducted right off your paycheck. Well, you know, that's fine and everything, but those people just didn't get financially educated yet. A 401k doesn't provide you with income while you're contributing to it. Well, when you learn how to control your own investments, you're more likely to know where the return is coming from, have a higher return. You're going to get those returns both while you own the asset now and in retirement, and you're going to live a life if you can throughout your life. We've covered plenty of concrete examples of how to do this by now. If you're expanding your means by spending to enhance the quality of life with your precious time, 
Well, it's important that you do that. That's contributing to your irreplenishable time that you'll never get back. You must guard that quality of time with your life because it literally is your life. Well, then you need to cover your growing expenses to free up that time. That happens when you learn how to be a good investor. To be a successful investor, you don't just need a good rate of return. You need a rate of return above and beyond the rate of inflation. That's a real rate of return. Inflation is the price increase of goods and services over time. That's what it means today. Now, closer to World War II days, the term inflation used to mean an expansion of the money supply. But today, inflation generally refers to a decrease in the value of the currency. So over time, it takes more units of that currency to maintain your same standard of living. That is reflected as a price increase. Beating inflation is best done by increasing your investor savvy. One thing to be ever mindful of in devising your financial plan is to be the best investor that you can be. Investments that generate a rate of return that exceeds inflation is a real rate of return to you. That's impact. That impact results in an outcome. That's making sure that your child goes to a better college. That's that trip to East Africa to summit Mount Kilimanjaro. That's affording a home in a great neighborhood. That's having a ski season pass and all that fun and memories with your family as opposed to a punch card where you go once in a while. That's giving more money to charity than you ever thought possible. So if the rate of return on your investment is 2%, but inflation is 3%, your real rate of return is the difference, negative 1%. You've just lost purchasing power. Even though it provides you with more dollars, those dollars are watered down. So Even though you have more dollars than ever, you have less prosperity than you had before. Inflation reflects a reduction in purchasing power of the dollar or whatever currency you use. If you're healthy and under 40, inflation is why at some point in your lifetime, a millionaire will be a poor person. Yeah, a millionaire will be a poor person. If you're aiming to be a millionaire now, you're aiming entirely too low. All right, so what about the scenario where over a couple years, if a dollar is worth 10% less over that time, then what good is it to you to have accumulated 10% more dollars over that time? None. It's of no benefit to you. That didn't increase your prosperity at all. You just have more weakened dollars. My goal isn't just to give you ideas and information every week to give you more dollars. It's to provide you with greater prosperity. There's a difference. Whatever country you're listening in from this week, inflation has almost certainly existed for most of all of your life, and many feel that it will continue to be the case over the longer term. Though we did have Richard Duncan on the show for episode 6, and he feels that deflation is more likely over the shorter term. We're going to discuss inflation and then what you can do to beat it today. And I'm not talking about the stomach inflation that you might be experiencing here during the holidays. (laughs) You know, to me, it's remarkable how little every day people think about inflation. Even more so, I find that active, engaged investors even forget to consider the effects of inflation on their investments. You know why I believe that most people dismiss the effects of inflation, even though it affects them daily? And here's why. Inflation is invisible. Yeah, it's invisible. Every month, you receive a bunch of bills in your life. Your internet provider bill, electric bill, water bill, heating bill, credit card bill, phone bill. But where's your inflation bill? We just discussed how inflation diminishes your prosperity like all those other monthly bills do. But yet you're not seeing an inflation bill. Never in your life have you received an inflation bill. Luckily, I haven't either. I'm not really looking for another bill in my life. (laughs) Another reason that inflation is often invisible is that corporations know that a product price increase passed along to a consumer is unpopular. You might not see inflation if you know that your box of breakfast cereal has cost $3.99 for five years. What you didn't notice is that the box was an 18-ounce box five years ago, a 16-ounce box two years ago, and it's a 14.5-ounce box today. But it still costs the same 3 dollars 
The cereal costs more per ounce than ever. That's inflation. You might be more perceptive and say that, oh yeah, actually, I did happen to notice that one. But there was still nothing that you could do about it if you wanted to continue eating that cereal for breakfast. How invisible is inflation? Say you notice a nice shirt at the department store and it costs $50. A year later, you notice that the same shirt costs $50. Oh, well, there's clearly no inflation here, right? No, there could still be inflation there. If in the last year, the shirt still looks the same and feels largely the same, yet the manufacturer substituted a cheaper synthetic blend, and they also changed labor supply from the U.S. to Vietnam so that they can produce the shirt for 20 or 50% less, but they still charged you the same amount, that enhances the company's bottom line, and or there was a diminished purchasing power of the dollar at play, inflation. Companies are in business to make a profit. They have an incentive to make earnings and pass costs along to you, so they will keep masking inflation whenever and wherever possible. I mean, when's the last time you really read about a price decrease for anything? It doesn't happen often. Over the long term, more inflation is inevitable. Just ask your grandparents how much they paid for a gallon of milk or a gallon of gasoline. It's, you know, 25 cents or 50 cents. Or ask your grandparents how much they paid for their first home. All right, let's look at the example of inflation with your grandparents' first home. They bought their three-bed, two-bath ranch home in 1970 for $50,000. Back then, that same 50 k would have bought you 10 cars. Fast forward to today, that 50 k home is worth 500 k That's a tenfold increase. One might think that's such a significant rise that it must provide a rate of return above and beyond inflation, but it doesn't. Because today, that $500,000 house still only buys 10 cars. So is one any better off in that scenario? Well, not in house. It's still a three-bed, two-bath house, and it still buys that same 10 cars. Inflation is like an invisible tax that you're paying on top of the visible tax that you're already aware of. If you bought a stock a year ago for $100 and sold it today for $104, your gain was $4. But after you pay tax on your gain, your net gain was closer to $3 on that stock that you bought for $100. But if inflation was 3%, you haven't made anything. You're right back where you began, even though you thought you had a gain. The stock market has to hit highs every day just to keep pace with inflation. Well, maybe you're thinking, well, well, doesn't the government track inflation so that you know how much inflation you paid at least? And not really. Many of our listeners already know that the government reported CPI, the Consumer Price Index, which is meant to measure inflation, doesn't include food and energy because those food and energy sectors are more volatile and subject to seasonal factors. Economists try to adjust for certain regional and demographic factors, but it becomes really difficult. An increase in the cost of heating fuel affects people in cold regions more than warm regions. An increase in the price of the cost of meat doesn't do any harm to vegetarians, and on and on. Imagine that you woke up from bed one morning to find that someone had chopped an inch off all of our rulers so that today's foot was now only as long as yesterday's 11 inches. You might go from being 6 feet tall to 6 foot 6, but it wouldn't be any easier for you to reach the top shelf in the kitchen without a footstool. Similarly, if inflation raises both your income and the prices of everything you buy by the same percentage, the value of a dollar as an economic ruler shrinks, but it is neither harder nor easier to maintain the same real standard of living. In that sense, inflation is purely a nominal phenomenon and it wouldn't have any effect on you. But over time, rising wages are not keeping pace with rising inflation. That's why you need to learn how to be an investor. Part of the reason is because it's hidden and the government consumer price index is is not keeping up. Inflation is often higher than, than what is reported. Inflation and cost of living increases are two phenomena that are closely related. The bottom line is that The United States and many world countries have an incentive, a reason, a motivation to inflate and reduce the purchasing power of your dollar. Why? 
Just making up a number for simplicity's sake, if the U.S. owes China $1 trillion, then it's easier to pay back that debt if the U.S. just prints and prints and prints more dollars and then pays off China with more of these newly printed dollars. That act increases the supply of dollars, waters down each dollar's value, and it heats up inflation because it takes more of these watered-down dollars to buy new tires for your car or whatever. No wonder that fewer people can retire today. They never learned how to be good investors. They thought that it was good that they had more dollars, but they didn't learn that more dollars don't mean more prosperity until it was too late. I'm here to make sure that doesn't happen to you. Inflation is going to continue to be a stealthy pickpocket in your life. Luckily, it won't be for you as long as you listen to things like this and then you apply the knowledge. Here's how you can make yourself more aware of inflation. It's something that I call tilting the chart. I've never heard anyone else talk about this before, and here's what I mean by tilting the chart. All right, you've almost certainly looked at the price of an asset chart, a chart with a line plotted over time, whether that's for stocks, real estate, oil, gold, whatever. It's that zigzagging line that's hopefully higher on the upper right side of the chart than where it starts at the lower left side of the chart over whatever given time horizon. When I show students a chart at the front of the room, one that clearly shows that asset prices are not adjusted in today's dollars, there's no indication that it's an inflation-adjusted chart, well, what I do is I kind of start to freak the students out a little bit. I look back at the students and I start asking just one of them, hey, why are you looking at the chart funny? (laughs) I ask another why are you looking at the chart like that? I'll go ask a third one. Dude, why are you looking at the chart so strangely? Inevitably, they don't know what I mean. They start looking back at me in a confused fashion like I've lost my marbles or something. Next, I go to the front of the room and I tilt the big chart at a slight angle so that the right side is now lower than the left side. It's like the entire chart is now askew and tilting downward as you look at it from left to right. The same time I tilt it, I say, you weren't accounting for inflation. Viewed that way, now that uptrending line on the chart has a reduced slope. It's not as steep. We just accounted for inflation. The real gain in inflation-adjusted dollars just isn't as significant as the nominal gain that previously showed that steeper slope. Most of your life, you've been looking at these charts wrong. That simple physical act of tilting the chart, you know, just do that once. Just doing that once is going to help you become more aware of inflation going forward and how important it is that you beat it. If you've got that chart on a computer monitor, just tilt your monitor a little bit. That physical act will reinforce it and help you remember it. Tilt the chart. All right, what's this all mean to you? What can you do about beating inflation with this greater awareness? Hopefully, you're starting to understand why you need to learn to be a good investor rather than just putting money in the stock market hoping you get an 8 to 10% return. Because after taxes and a real rate of inflation, that can be a 2% real return or less. With real estate investing into carefully selected markets, anything less than a 25% rate of return is disappointing. At the bottom end of 25%, With an 18% real rate of return after inflation and taxes, you have still substantially increased your prosperity. Well, how are such high returns achievable without a great degree of risk? Well, with investing in real estate, one way is through something called the leverage ratio. All right, we're going to assume 5% appreciation here. If you just pay some attention, there are a few numbers here, but this is very powerful. Assuming 5% appreciation like real estate provides nationally over the long term, if you put a $20,000 down payment on a $100,000 property, that property just experienced $5,000 of gain after that year. On just a $20,000 down payment, that's a 25% rate of return before we've even added in the other ways you're paid with rental real estate. The 20% down payment is one-fifth. One-fifth is a 5 to 1 leverage ratio. 5 times the 5% rate of return on the asset is a 25% rate of return on your down payment. Let's do another example. A 25% down payment is one quarter, one fourth. 
that's a four to one leverage ratio. Four times that same 5% rate of return on the asset is a 20% rate of return on your down payment. A 50% down payment is one half. That's a two to one leverage ratio. Two times the 5% rate of return on the asset is a 10% rate of return on your down payment. Now that you better understand how leverage ratios work, you can see that lower down payments and lower equity positions contribute positively to a higher rate of return in the assumptions above. And note that this return through appreciation on the asset is just one of at least four ways that you benefit financially from real estate. In all the examples above, you might tack on another 10% rate of return generated from the tenant rent income and add in yet another 5% rate of return from the loan paydown from the tenant, add in the tax benefits, and so on. That's how your rate of return gets to be so high over the long term. Most importantly, it's a rate of return far above and beyond the rate of inflation. That's a real rate of return to you, one that doesn't just increase the amount of what you've accumulated is denominated in dollars, but what actually increases your wealth and your prosperity. Well, on the topic of better increasing your prosperity, and as kind of a programming reminder here, Get Rich Education is different. It's about you and increasing your wealth and prosperity. Now, I've got plenty of show topics and guests lined up, but you can send me a message directly at keith at getricheducation.com and let me know what you've liked on the show so far and what you'd like to hear more of. I really want to know what you want to hear more of with the end goal of giving you a better life through increased prosperity and yes, above and beyond inflation. I will even reply to every message personally, though I don't know that I'm going to be able to keep that up indefinitely or be able to give a long response to you either, but I will personally reply to each one for a while here. That's Keith at GetRichEducation.com. Yes, this show is about you. It's been pointed out to me that six of the first 10 show episodes have either the word you or your in the title. That's appropriate because the goal with Get Rich Education is to help make you more successful than me, faster than me. If you message me directly, I will be able to better do that for you. So for my developer, John Collins, designer, Marcus Whelan, show editor, Vidran Jampo, I am your host, Keith Weinhold. Now go out there and don't quit your daydream. You've been listening to the Get Rich Education podcast, telling you what the wealthy won't tell you about real estate and investing. If you enjoyed the show, please take a minute to visit iTunes and leave your comments. Nothing on this show should be considered specific, personal, or professional advice. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, financial, or business professional for individualized advice. Opinions of guests are their own. Information is not guaranteed. All investment strategies have the potential for profit or loss. The host is operating on behalf of Get Rich Education, LLC, exclusively.